Hi, my name is Zhi Xuan Yang. I'm a PhD student from Iowa State University. Welcome to lecture three. Today's topic is building and deploying ping-based solvers. Me and my coworker Aditya Bulu, who is also from Iowa State University, will lead us through this lecture. Here's today's online. We will first have a quick introduction and then the preliminaries about what is your network and how to choose loss function, what is loss function, and what happens in bad propagation. After that, we'll like to introduce physical informed neural network, which is PIN. After we have some understanding, some idea of PIN, we would like to talk about uh, some techniques that other than PINs, but also uh, do a good job recently. So physical based surrogate using um, neural networks. This is kind of a new concept that uh, use machine learning to be our surrogate model for simulations or use uh, machine learning to be as a PD uh, solver. So why do we need that? We have two aspects. One is for the forward problems. Second is for the inverse problems. What is forward problems and what is inverse problem? We can think uh, as that forward problems that we know our problems. We know the PD uh, equations, or we know at least some uh, conditions about some conditional equation, or just we know what to simulate. On the other hand, inverse problem is that we are not that sure our PD equations. Either some terms uh, in the PD is, is we don't have that, yeah, it's missed, or some parameters in the PD is just unknown for us, or the condition equation is, is unsure for us. So for an inverse problem, what we need to do is that we, we need to have some observation data point and the solution at those uh, data. We use this information and use uh, machine learning to help us learn the, the complete formula of the PDE complete form of the uh, condition equ equation itself. So the forward problem uh, is simply that we use it as a surrogate model for our simulation for our PD equation. And the inverse problems is that, okay, we have some observation data and we want to learn what does the, the full problem looks like. So that is why fast and accurate modern physics uh, is, is uh, needed. Okay. So before we use uh, machine learning to do this fancy stuff, uh, we can learn what is machine learning or what is neural network. So what are neural networks? Neural networks is named after just the structure or inspired by the human brain mimicking the way that biology neurons signal to one another. Okay, so is that okay? Okay, I know the name and like, I sing a lot without informing you a lot. So what exactly is that? It, it, yeah. So as we can see uh, from the graph, from picture in the slides, okay, it's look like human's brain. It's look like human's neural system. So what is this? So from the left-hand side, we have some input layer in the between, we have multiple hidden layers and then we have output layers. So neural network containing, uh, containing an input layer, one or more hidden layers and a hot output layer. Each node, nodes uh, is the circles here, here, here. So each node uh, is associated with some weights and some bias, some activation function, and so for each node, they're receiving some information from other nodes, from nodes from pre previous layers. And they have some magic 
they have some procedures in, in the nodes. And then they got some output for nodes in the next layer. So that's why we'll say, oh, it's named after the human brain, after it's inspired by the neural signal because it's one node's got some signal, process it, output it, and this will be the uh, signal for next nodes. This might be still not that understandable, but if we look at this, so our brain is just like your network. Maybe our hint will have some uh, information or we touch something and uh, those uh, touch something is the signal, the feeling, and we, we have uh, new words from here all the way to my brain and my brain and eventually think, oh, it's a bottle of water. So that is what, like, what happens in the neural network. Yeah, just a cute image for us to better understand. So in the neural network in, or in each node, actually uh, it not only receives some information, but also it processes it. And in, in between of it, when it processes it, it, for each neuron, for each neuron cell, for each node, there is activation function. So each and each activation function have some uh, threshold. If the if the if the information that these nodes receive exceed uh, the combined information exceed some threshold, then the node, then the cell will keep uh, transfer this information to next layer of cell. So if the, if the combined information is within the activation function, then our brain will not feel anything. The, then because it's, it's will not, it will not, trans, the information will not transfer to next layer. So here is what I said in a math equation. So as we can see the nodes uh, here is a cell that I want to show in here, okay? So it just looks alike. They, so the nodes got some information from the inputs and it has some bias. All together is my com combined information. And these kind of stuff will go through an activation function. If the if um, if the activation function, the value, the final value exceeds some threshold, then it will output one. If it's not, then just nothing output. So as we uh, let's look at the equation here. So the combined information I'm using here. It's basically some weights, W1, W2, all the way to Wn. It's some weights times the information from previous layer or from input layer. So let's say uh, the first, the X1, these nodes give me information X1, okay? And these nodes, the current nodes, receive the X1 and times it with the weights. For the, for the X1. And then add it up together, finally plus the bias. So this is this equation, W1X1 plus W2X2 plus W3X3, da, 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 plus the bias. And if these, uh, these will then go through an activation function. So, the things that we need to learn from this slide is that elements in a node, there is some input information to the node, some weight of this uh, information, a bias of the node, activate, activation function of the node, and after that, it will output some information for next low node. Yes. So for example, if I tell you I rent a, a house, an apartment that is located in our state, it's 2B, 1B, 
and the the house is like ten years old. Okay, so you receive those uh, input. The neural network will then will then uh, do some calculation in the network and output a value in the final output layer. Okay, so my question is, given this information, guess my rent. You may guess, is that 1200? Is that 2000? You may have a guess. And after we have a guess, if you want to learn, I need to tell you the answer, right? So you can learn from uh, what's the answer, what's my guess. You, you, you will learn the, the renting price in our state. Okay. The answer is 700, for example. Then you will learn, okay, I might guess, I might guess wrong. So I learned from the arrow. I learned from what I guess, 1200 to 700. Okay, there is a loss, there is an arrow there. So we learn from the arrow as the neural network, it learn from arrow as well. You learn from the loss. So this difference, uh, 1200, 1200s, and 700, this gap is our arrow, it's our nose. We need to learn from that. So as I mentioned, it's a loss. So we need to, and we need to have our loss function, right? How to, uh, how to determine whether 1200 is a good guess. We need to have a loss function. Loss function is measure how far an estimate value is from its true value. Like how far 700 is from, no, 12, 1200 is from 700. So it helps the model to evaluate their own performance. What is learning and what is training is basically mi minimize a chosen loss function. For example, if my loss function is, is basically the true value minus the, the estimate value uh, squared then your error will be 2,500. And I want to minimize the loss so that if you, uh, if you do it correct, if you guess 700 for the rent, then the loss function is zero. So that is how it works. So learning and training is basically minimize the chosen loss function. Loss functions define what a good prediction is and what is not. In short, choosing a right loss function detects uh, how well your ester, uh, estimator will be. A good loss function should be able to well describe the gap between prediction and the true values. And I just uh, list two extremely popular loss function in uh, regression-based uh, problem. Like what we did is a regression-based, I have a value 700 and you guess 1200. This is just a basic regression based problem. Okay, so the first one is called mean absolute value. It's quite simple. It's just um, the, the absolute value, the, the mean of the sum of the absolute arrow. And the right hand side uh, is mean square arrow. So it just it just you take the difference between your guess and the true values and you square it and you take the average. These two are uh, very well known and popular in machine learning area. Okay, after we know what is that and what do we need to learn, then how to learn? We know that every node should together makes the, the load smaller, right? So each node should, should, should make their effort. Some nodes uh, should be larger, some nodes should be smaller. And also each node has different level of influence to the final answer. So how do we do that? And just as I mentioned, in nodes, there are bi bias, there are weights, there are activation function. What should, I, what should I change? So this series of question I just gave to you is what? is why we need back propagation. The basic idea of back propagation is that I use the partial differential of the loss function to know how should each node's update be changed. 
For example, this note should be larger, but how large? This note should be smaller. How do you know that and how small it should change? So by uh, this, we can gain from partial differential of the loss function. If we do partial loss function over partial the output of the nodes, then it basically means that what, uh, what the, the change of the output of the nodes will affect the, the loss function. Then after we have that, we can, from there, we have some clue to adjust our weight and bias. Here it's a, a better visualized ex explanation of what I just mentioned. The green, the green arrows here is X and Y inputs in the node. Nodes do some calculation, combine information and do some like activation function. Well, output, uh, well, well has its output, which is Z. Okay, so it is forward. And in the back propagation, the loss function, which is the capital L, we do this capital uh, partial capital L over partial output. This is the gradient um, of the nodes output. From here, uh, means that I have the information, I have a clue of how should I change the Z? How should I change the nodes, nodes output? However, change of the nodes output is not just boom, it changed. No, we need to change the weight and the bias of it. So after that, we have, uh, we can use chain, chain rule as uh, the equation here. So the partial, the, the arrow over the partial of the weight means that how should I change my weight in the notes, right? This, this is what we finally need to know. How should I change the weight? How should I change the bias? Okay, how should we change it? Well, equals to the arrow, partial, the arrow, partial the prediction times partial the prediction, partial the hidden uh, nodes, the output of the hidden nodes times partial the output of hidden nodes over partial of the weights. So this is a basic calculus chain rule. So if I need to tell you a story about that, then actually is that I want to know how to tune the weight to have a smaller arrow to have a smaller error from the loss function. So then I want to know, I mean here, partial error, partial prediction. Okay, to make the loss function smaller, how should I change the prediction? Okay, okay. When I know how do I change the prediction, then how do I change the function, sorry, the output from the nodes? When I know how do I change the output from the nodes, finally, I do the partial once more and I will know how do I, how should I change the weights? Okay, that comes to the second question here. It's basically the new weight should be the original, the old weight minus a learning rate and times how should I change it? And the learning rates, it's another hyperparameters that we can tune. So this means that, okay, when I know how should I, uh, how should I change my weight to make the arrow smaller? And, and it will be the minus arrow, partial arrow, partial weight part. And then I time some learning weight. This is my, the minus A, in the partial turn will be my uh, direction and my step side. So that's how I learn. So my next, my new weight should give me a better performance because my old weight uh, have all these partial, the chain rule information and it goes to a direction across a step which this, this change should make the arrow smaller. 
So this is how my training model improving. So if I do it for a sufficient amount of times, sufficient amount of iteration, my weights should be, or all the parameters, all bias, weights, active, activation function, all the parameters in the neural, in the neural network should be, should, should give us a smaller and smaller loss function. Okay, so how do neural network or how computers calculate those partial derivative of, of, of that, of an expression? It looks, it sounds complicated. We are for sure not doing by hand. So this whole process can be complete by automatic differentiation, which is AD. It allows computer to compute those partial derivative of a value of a function accuracy and quickly, it's so important, quickly. It is uh, the process that allow AI to be as efficient as it today. Why we mentioned this AD, automatic differentiation? Because PIN, the physical inform neural network, actually relies on the automatic differentiation to calculate those partial derivative of the interesting PDE. PDE, partial differential equation. This partial term, it's, uh, it's calculated by automatic differentiation. After we have those uh, understanding of pin, no, of neural network, we finally comes to pins, physical informed neural network. Ready? So the physical inform neural network suddenly goes complicated, but not that complicated. If we look at this part, the left hand side, we will see it's just uh, the, the neuron in the brain. We just uh, saw previously this part. Yeah, we like this part, right? Okay, so, but within the this part, the magic point of this is that we have some, we have good loss function. We have very good loss function so that these model will learn the PD equation. How does that happen? So our loss function is based on our PDE, our partial equation, sorry, partial differential equation. We make it while minimizing the loss, it, the, uh, the prediction, of the network, the output of the network will fulfill, yes, fulfill those or will follow those PD and our condition equation. This is the rough idea, the dream idea of physical inform neural network. Make the neural network learn that the output uh, learned and the output of the neural network will follow the, the partial differential equation and the conditional equations. Okay, so we will, uh, in the following, I'll talk about what is pin. The input and the output of the pin, the loss function of the pin, and what happened in the back propagation, and also our optimal parameters. I will also give you some uh, examples and results of the ping and arrow between predicted solution from ping and physical uh, exact solution. It basic some arrow analysis. And here is a very quick uh, comparison between ping and some other simulation method. For example, find finite element method. So ping is, we just need to learn, need to know that it's based on its parameters, the weights and bias basis, those function, and most importantly is that rely on match. It's match free. And then here is match free, free. Okay, so what is the input and what is the output of the ping? The input actually is the time domain 
um, coordinate and space domain coordinate. Like if I have an equation, heat equation 1D, and it's based on time, and it's based on x axis, then my uh, input will be just the x axis I want to have, and the time, and then inserting in, for example. If I want to have the solution for following PDE equation, which is partial u over partial t equals to lambda partial square u, partial x squared, and I'm uh, inserting in the range of minus x uh, between minus one and one, t between zero to one, then my input will be uh, a lot of x between minus one to one, a lot of t between zero to one, like here, x and t. So I might have some points like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, 0 0.3. It's just, uh, I will have a lot of random training points sampling from this region, which x is in this minus one, one, t in this zero to one. My output of the neural network will be the output of the PD solution, not output, <laughs> the solution of the PD equation, of the PDE. Right, because we want this neural network be our surrogate of this mm, PD solver or some simulation. So our output of the neural network will be the solution of the PD. Okay, as I mentioned, we can do that because we have some smart loss function. So to make and to make the neural network physics inform. The loss function is constituted with two terms. One, loss from the PDE, which is TF here, and loss from conditional equation, which is TB. So the loss function, as we can see here, the loss function theta is all the parameters that I have in the, in the neural network. Loss function, it's, it, it, it will be a, a function from theta because theta will affect the loss, right? Will affect the, the predict. So loss function theta t uh well is equal to some just some weights. My weight times the loss from uh my PD turn, some weights times my loss from the conditional turn. Okay. Do you remember my example that the equation I want to solve is here. Partial u over partial t equals to lambda partial u square, partial square u, partial x squared. Okay, how could I con convince you that I solve this? I can only be conceived, con conceive. I can, I, I, it will only be convincing enough for me, if you show me that partial u over partial t minus lambda partial square u partial x square equals to zero, then I then I will say okay, they are equal, right? These two minus should be zero if they are equal. That's the idea of the loss function for PDE. So the, the, the loss for the PDE part is just TF equals to this term minus this term, right? And in the training of the neural network, I want to minimize it. When I minimize it, it goes to zero. If it truly equals to zero, then I can say it is soft and it follow the equation. On the similar concept, how to fulfill the boundary condition and initial condition. It's just like, if, if you can see here, the partial u, uh, no, the u uh, xt is my, is my initial condition minus something or equals to something. Then I just put the minus this minus this to be zero, or this minus this is my loss term. When I minimize the loss term, it get closer and closer to zero. If it's truly zero, it's perfect zero, then I just solve it. 
Okay. So whether u prong, so uh, just quick look of the equation. Whether u prong is the output of the neural network, gd is the result for initial collision. Okay. After we have that, we have our loss function. Okay, in the back propagation of the training process, the partial turn of the solution U are computed by the ad, computed by the AD. Therefore, the loss function can calculate and minimize to be a more simple sentence is that we don't need to worry about how to calculate the loss. I know in the loss function, there is some partial term, but we don't need to worry because it is calculated by automatic differentiation. Yes. And this is how we, uh, what happens in the training that we are using that propagation, we are using AD, so we can have, we can calculate the loss function. And also uh, the loss function can be minimizing. Okay, so after that, we can start to find out parameters. And the parameters, theta is the parameters in the neural network is, is just weights, for example, weights uh, in each layer. And training the model means trying to find the optimal parameters of the neural network to best, to best minimize the loss function. And when do we start uh, training a model? Is that in training the model, we'll have some training points. Okay. And the neural network will learn the loss from the training data set. But at the same time, we'll have some validation training set. In the validation set, the, the, the model is basically never saw, never see the, the validation set before. And we use this validation set to test the performance. Because if just, if we, if we cannot like test uh, the neural network with some training points that the neural network had already been seen, because this is not convincible, right? Maybe the neural network just remember it, you remember the answer. But every time you give it a new point that you have never seen, the neural network may, got you, may, may give you a wrong answer. So we use the validation set uh, to see whether the neural network is actually learning but not remembering. Okay, so when the validation training loss is not keeping decreasing, then it's a good point to stop training the neural network. When we stop, the neural network can be viewed as a surrogate model of the PDE. It can predict the solution at all points in the space and time domain. It's a quick recap that we first need to construct a neural network. It will have some parameters. We need to like make the model know our training set and our loss function and specify the loss function uh, of both the PDE equation and boundary condition. Yeah. And the loss function for the PDE turn, you actually have a name and residual. So the residual is just here, just the loss for the PDE part in our case. Okay, quick example. So uh, let's say I want to uh, solve this uh, equation. It's partial u over partial t equals to alpha partial square u, partial x squared, and alpha equals to well, three. And I have my x in this region, my t in zero to one, I have initial condition, which is sine pi x expansional minus t. Okay. So that is what we do and we will, yeah, okay. <laughs> so after we have that, we got some results from uh, the pin and don't worry about how to do that in code. Uh, this is, that is the topic in slide four, in lecture four. So this is some example results uh, from, from there. 
as we can see that my x domain is range from minus one to one. So the, the neural network is able to give me any the, the solution from any points in this domain. X is between two, minus one and one. T is between one to zero. And we can also plot the residual. So residual again is a low turn from the PDE part. Okay, after that, I'd like to spend maybe five minutes to quick talk about the arrow of the surrogate model. So the arrow comes from three parts. One is optimization arrow, one is generalization arrow, arrow. The third one is approximation arrow. Okay, comes from three parts. The arrow should be somewhere within the sum, uh, smaller, lesser than the sum of these three terms. Optimization arrow occurs because we might, we might not find the global optimi uh, optimal solution uh, for the parameter. <laughs> because we might find some local minimi minimum, local minimum uh, of the loss function. And we might uh, stop at those parameters that only lead us to the local minimum, but not global minimum of the loss function. So that's why the optimization error occurs. So if you want to decrease that, you can just train a lot of time from different uh, initial, initial weights or initial bias, train several times from different initial starting point and take the best one. Or you can use some more uh, powerful optimizer while you train, but those methods might take more costs or take more time. Okay, then generalization error. These occur because we are using a finite size of training data. Means that the model might, for example, if I have huge training point, then my X wants to be minus a thousand to plus a thousand. My time will be here to one years later. Okay, so for this big of domain, I might, if I just give you a thousand points to train, then those points might not be able to capture all, all things that happen in this big domain because we are using a finite size of training set. So some arrow actually comes from our sampling, right? the sampling of the uh, training set and it's finite. So there must be some information that are not, that is not captured by our training points. That's where our generalization error comes from. If we want to decrease it, then we can use more training point, but again, it might cause, it might Cause a little bit, it might you might need more time to to train it. So as I show here, yeah, and the the f the f in this box is the domain that that my neural network, this architecture of neural network can capture. For example, if I have a super complicated PD equation. And I just give you a very simple brain, a very simple neural network. You might never learn well because the network architecture will somehow uh, constrain how complicated it can learn. So the F is kind of your, the network's imagination, the, the, the function domain that this architecture can learn. Here, these two, if, if our, if the neural network architecture can learn it, but we might also have some arrow versus from optimization arrow, or I just not give it enough points, or just some just some information loss when I sampling my points. 
Well, I mentioned it because it comes from our third kind of error, which is approximation error. Approximation error appears since the neural network we choose might not be able to capture the PD function. So if we give its neural network a complicated architecture that it might capture more and more complex function. But you might have some error from uh, some more uh, optimization error from there, from a more complicated neural network because you have more you have more ways, more parameters in the neural network waiting for you to train. So it's kind of a trade-off and also it takes more time. So this is uh, three uh, type of arrows that the physical infra neural networks may have. Okay, so this is uh, all my part today. And for the following part, uh, my dear coworker Aditya Bulu will will uh, take his talk. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, so we we are going to continue the topic from where uh, it, we covered in terms of physics informed neural networks. Now we'll be looking at what more can we do with physics informed neural networks. Um, so I just wanted to bring down the point that PINS is not the first uh, to actually do physics informed or uh, incorporating physics information uh, from partial differential equations using neural networks. So there is this paper uh, in 1998, which uses artificial neural networks for solving ordin ordinary and partial differential equations. Um, their approach is pretty similar to what we do in physics informed neural networks. Just that they uh, they use the same collocation points, at, at, except for the fact that automatic differentiation, which we are using right now, was not very well defined at that time. So imagine without automatic differentiation, you'd have to define the loss function and all the gradients and all manually. And people have done that uh, in the beginning to actually uh, do this. It's just that after the rise of deep learning and with the amount of work people have been doing, physics-informed neural network became very popular and has become one of the most popular approaches which people have been used. But however, having said that, there are other methods which also came up after physics-informed neural network. Or even before physics-informed neural network came in 2019, uh, Data-driven discovery of PDEs was another work which was uh, done uh, uh, and uh, published in Science Advances, where given a partial amount of data, uh, how do you uh, discover some partial differential equations in mathematical form by fitting uh, from the experimental data using some a lot of differential and polynomial terms. Um, this is a work which was uh, a very phenomenal and that led to revival of the physics informed neural network as we know uh, right now. And then after physics informed neural network, there were other works which came in later on as well. So uh, this is a work on variational objectives or variational uh, physics informed neural network, where instead of solving for the strong form of the PDE, you and uh, you train two different networks, one for you, which is the output which you want to predict, at the same time, you also use a V, which is a test function, and you solve for the variational objective. And this variational objective is what you're uh, visualizing. Now, uh, this kind of an approach of using test functions uh, for uh, the, the objective function is something uh, quite new in terms of, uh, although it is existing in the numerical world, but this was a, a very new work uh, performed uh, in 2019 and 2021. Um, and this is something which came after pins came in. And uh, extending variational pins came the various weak adversarial networks where he, uh, you can train the, both the networks of the, the, uh, the network for training the PDE and the test function, both adversarially trained one after the other in an alternative optimization, just like you perform a generative adversarial network. This weak adversarial networks provides a very robust 
system for uh, training higher dimensional uh, PD uh, solutions. So this has been a work which was done in 2020. And uh, more recently in 2021, um, people have extended the spins for a more uh, uh, distributed parallel setup where imagine that you have different agents at MPI processes. Uh, each MPI process has one GPU and you perform at the physics informed neural network training on each of the GPUs separately for different domains. In other words, what you do is you say you have original domain uh, omega, you split it into different omega i domains, and each of the domains is solved by one physics informed neural network. And at the boundary, you apply some interface points and up, uh, solve for the with the PDE and the, some kind of Neumann boundary condition or some other boundary condition, just like you do in domain decomposition. So this kind of an approach is what uh, uh, people have been using very recently in terms of how to parallelize physics informed neural network for very large set of problems. And this is a pioneered work in that area. And uh, it's not that uh, pins are completely uh, very robust towards all these kinds of issues which we, uh, we face in even neural networks like how do you uh, ensure whether your in, in networks learn well how do you ensure whether your con uh, network converges to the uh, actual solution and uh, the convergence and there is a lot of works trying to characterize the failure modes and understand and analyze uh, where, when will pins work and when will pins not work and all. So the, uh, two of these very recent papers, uh, which came out in 2021, talk about how uh, pins, when, the, when do pins fail to train and what are the different uh, failure modes and all. Having said that, uh, these uh, pins are still very uh, robust and have very, very uh, high popularity. And these methods are again extended further as well. There is a much wider application of using neural network based PD solutions. In this case, it, uh, uh, this has been applied for a uh, surface rec reconstruction task and several other tasks. In this case, what you're doing is you're solving for a uh, uh, for a partial differential equation of iconal equation here. So iconal equation is something which uh, is used to represent the sign distance field. So iconal equation is, is something you would be solving over the whole domain, but given some set of point cloud, you would want to also ensure that the point cloud satisfies the boundary conditions of sign distance field to be equal to zero at the boundary and the normal is equal to the gradient of the sign distance field. And then uh, using this kinds of loss functions, one is able to actually get very good surface reconstruction from the uh, uh, point cloud geometry, which, which is provided. So this has been a very wide application. There are several applications, of course, and uh, uh, it just enlisting, uh, enlisting all of them is going to be really painful. So we just wanted to give you a flavor of what all different kinds of applications uh, uh, have emerged from the area of physics informed neural networks or using uh, a PD constrained or physics constrained or, uh, like deep neural networks, which we are looking at over here. Um, so in terms of conclusion and uh, concluding remarks, we see that uh, you uh, we introduced the idea of uh, physics-based uh, surrogate models, and we also covered the idea of what physics-informed neural networks are, and some variants of what pins and some other extensions to it. Coming up next in the next session, we cover a hands-on session on uh, physics-informed neural networks, how do you train them, how do you code and physics informed neural networks for a particular application and then so on. Um, this session ends with this. So if you guys have any questions, you feel free to ask them. Otherwise, thank you.